Hey everyone, Eggman here with another video. Uh, I recorded this once and the audio bugged out, so uh, this is this is my second take. Uh, and so if I'm not as if I seem a little lackluster, don't let that dissuade you. I love this deck. I love this archetype. It's it's getting better. I'm gonna say I, I use I said in uh, set six that it was really good, and that's not the case. But I think they got like two or three cards out of this like eight set <laughs> eight set expansion but i think it makes a huge difference and i, I want to talk to you guys about it so uh, i've gone uh five and oh with this deck uh it feels really great uh if you haven't seen the twitch uh vods for it there's going to be like a little information thing up there and also a link in the description but uh yeah i've, I've played on this uh this deck a, a while and it just feels and by a while i mean like two days but it feels really good and uh, I really, I really like the the differences that these two cards add. So let's let's talk about the leader, the the most controversial part of this about this whole deck. So uh, first, uh, auto once per turn when you play a Bojack Brigade, draw one card, get plus five k. Uh, really good, and it's also not just during your turn, which w normally is not uh, wouldn't have been a thing, but. These new cards are the first cards that can that are Bojack Brigades that can summon themselves on your opponent's. Uh, opponent's turn, so that's really, really good. Being able to plop down a card for uh, one energy, uh, both I'll go into these, but being able to play them uh, and draw a card and get a plus 5k boost and defense uh, really makes a big difference. So that's really good. Also, uh, auto and both sides have this. Um, when you combo with two Bojack Brigades from your battle area during your turn, you can blow up something in rest. So that's really good. I uh, usually use this like once or twice a game just for like some additional, uh, you know, blowing up effects. Uh, feels good, but um, yeah, just, just kind of meh. Not not the worst, not the best, but uh, the the worst is the awakening skill, and by skill I mean it just flips the card over. You don't get draw two, you don't get untap two, you don't get draw one, you don't get untap one. Uh, you get nothing. You just get to flip the card over, and that's it. And that's why a lot of people have issues with. Um, it's not it's not the best. Uh, I'm gonna say it, but you the the thing that. The reason this is is because you get a lot of value from the cards in the archetype, and uh, we'll see how, how that works out. But uh, quickly on the uh, Awakened side, so it also has the auto once per turn draw one. Uh, you don't get the 5k boost, but it does stay for the, for the turn that you do Awaken. Uh, you want to be able to Awaken on a turn or, uh, where you can play two cards from the Bojack Brigades, essentially. You play one on the Unawakened side, and then you play one on the uh, Awakened side just to get that boost. Um, th which can also be on your opponent's turn. You can play like the first Bojack, and then on uh, you can play this three drop to negate an attack, and then you can awaken during combo step and play another one with this this uh, four drop. We'll get into what, what those do real quick, but uh, uh, yeah, it, there's a lot of options for card draw and being defensive, and I think that's what this deck really lacked. It had a win condition, but didn't really have a good way to get there, and now I feel like it does. So. Uh, that's really cool. Um, lastly, it has a permanent you can combo with your Bojack Brigade cards in rest mode, which is meh. Once again, it's not like a huge thing, but like you can swing with like some of the bigger guys, and then uh, and then after that you can combo with them for full effect. So it's okay, not the worst, not the best. Uh, let's go into uh, the uh, we're going to talk about the new cards. I'm going to go over here just to make sure we have them all correct. So first, the best card I feel like for it uh, is this three drop really great has all the effects you want it's a counter it's it's defensive it's a three drop bojack you're gonna ex evolve into you You get some card draw uh the whole shebang so uh negate the attack uh so it's like roshi you can play this card to negate an attack and play this card so um that feels really good and then also during your opponent's turn uh if there's a card that is both blue and yellow in your energy area reduce the energy cost in your hand by two so it's just a one drop that you can play for free uh, you negate an attack. If your leader's unawakened, you get a draw card and get a plus 5k boost. Now, you also have a 3-drop Bojack on the field that your opponent has to get rid of, and you know unless they want uh, the EX evolve to happen. Just puts a lot of pressure in and a lot of defense. Really great. Also, you get a ping the top card of your, your opponent's deck because this is also the Janemba archetype. You don't have to worry about that effect, but it's, I guess, one closer to milling. Um, and then there's the multicolor Bojack. So it's a blocker, it's a 20k, uh, 10k combo. 10k combo is actually kind of restrictive, more than helpful at times, but uh, it also has this cool arrival skill, so blue-yellow, So uh, and you pay one yellow, so you play this card from your hand when you have a blue and, blue and yellow cards in your combo area. I'm not sure if you can just cheese this out by just playing comboing with a blue-yellow card, 
And then since you do have a blue and yellow card in your combo area, uh, with how it's worded, you might have to have two cards, which isn't like a huge thing. Um, I'm not sure how people are going to be ruling it. I have, I've just been playing that you can just combo with one and then activate the, the other one if you have like two of these in hand. But uh, th that might be wrong. Uh, but that's how I played it in my Twitch stream, I guess. Uh, but you get to play this thing for free. You can be, play it on your opponent's turn, so you get to draw a card. It has Blocker, which is amazing. And also, when you play this card, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards, switch it to rest, uh, to rest mode, then place the top card of your opponent's deck in the drop area. So you can play this card in defense, get a body out for free, and then also it has Blocker. And then if your opponent has a couple cards on the field, you can put one to rest, so you technically stopped another attack. So uh, that feels really great and uh, just a super good card. Uh, and then also, um, since it is blue-yellow, it also has the energy exhaust, so if you play this card in your energy area, from any area, it must be placed there in rest. Uh, you normally want to try to get this card turn one, just to put it in your energy. Uh, it's not a big deal skipping turn one for Bojack, especially since all the Bojack Brigade cards are more reactive than uh, aggressive, so it's okay to skip a turn, more or less, just to play this card in your energy area. It helps out leagues in the long run, so uh, there's that. And then we're also just running one Janimba. I've never actually played this, but... I wanted one more multicolor card just for some consistency. Um, it also has this new Aegis, so blue yellow. Uh, once per turn, if, you're, if it's your opponent's turn, you can activate this during your damage a defense step by placing cards in your hand. You drop area that match all colors specified by Aegis. So you have to put blue yellow. I think you can also choose it by just putting a multicolor card, but I haven't been confirmed or denied. Uh, you can choose up to two of your area switch in the active mode, which is really good. It's like your leader has like an awaken ability. Hooray! But I've never played this. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just could be more potential blue yellow stuff. Also, when this card activates Aegis, if there's no evil incarnate cards in your battle area other than this card, you place one card from the top of your deck, uh, or your opponent's deck, into the drop area. So once again, not important. Mail. The end, one more thing: these are both uh, Agent of Destructions, which is important for Bobbity. We're gonna s just jump right on there. Here, here we go. Uh, so for the blue cards, we're, it's it's blue yellow obviously, but we don't have a lot of blue cards. But we have four Bobbity. Um, what this Bobbity does is it has barrier. It's a one drop, and then also uh, when you play this, uh, all your Bojack, no, no, sorry, all your Agent of Destruction cards, uh, they don't have any specific cost, which is cool. And then also um, you reduce their energy cost by one. So all this is a three drop. This is a two drop, and they don't have any specific energy. Uh, it's really good just to sit out there. You can have more than one of these guys out there, but um, it's also just blue. Um, being able to just have some extra blue cards to combo with for free to get out this Bojack is great too, so uh, there's that as well, uh, which leads into Ultimate Judgment Jocko. Uh, this is probably like the loosest card in the deck, and it's just like if you don't want to run this card, you don't. I just wanted something blue that I could combo with for free. We really want to run these Sensu Beans, but they don't count as combo cards because they're active battle cards. Uh, which is confusing, but uh, but I thought Jocko was good. Jocko was really defensive. It's blue. Um, you can do some silly things against like Super Shenron because they'll try to like combo out a Balma to make sure that they have stuff for to continue their combo, and then you can just Jocko it back in their hand, and now they can't do anything, right? So I mean, it's cheesy, but uh, it has some potential. And it's just worst case, it's a blue card that you can get some defense out of, right? So there's that. Um, and uh, let's let's go into the pirate package. So we've got uh, the one drops. So this deck is like all these cards have a lot of text, to be honest. And so that can be kind of uh, dissuasive if anyone wants to play this archetype. But it, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's just like Bojack Brigade, such a lengthy tag. But um, so this uh, there's Beto, Bujin, and Zangia. All of them you can only have one of them out in your battle area. Um, which seems like restrictive, but there's a reason for it. It'd be, it'd be pretty broken if you could have more than one out. But uh, So there's Beto. Um, when you play this card, uh, you look at the top five for Bojack Brigade, add it to your hand. There are so many of those uh, in this deck that you will never whiff. It feels really great and helps you just find what you need. Like this, being able to search five top five for Bojack Brigade is better than drawing, like drawing one, just because you get to see what you want. You there, There's so many synergies pieces that you want to make sure you have that just being able to drop this for uh, for one, find what you need is, is really good. So your super combo is also that, and like your EX, your win conditions Bojack Brigade, and your multicolor card, really great card. And then there's also Bujin. Bujin's uh, really good as well. Um, it's just kind of like the toolbox for the deck. You're able to, um, so you can only have one. Uh, when you play this card, uh, you get to get a, uh, a level two or lower card from um, your hand and play it for free, which is great. Uh, they're just being able to play cards for two for one, 
right? It's, it's just really cheap. Uh, we have some options for that. And then also when you come with this card, you switch one of your opponent's cards to rest mode. This can be great, especially like it's it just is an, is an active battle ability. You're able to, uh, um, it's, it can be offensively or defensively as well. So you can like swing with leader. You can, your opponent can have like two cards, one in rest mode, one in not. You have like Beedo and Bujin out. You combo with Bujin, switch the other card you're not attacking to rest mode, uh, combo with Beedo. Uh, blow, you can blow up the card in rest mode, and now you also have like essentially a 25k leader swing, assuming the 5k leader k, uh, boost as well. So, uh, really good, can do some stuff like that too. Like if they attack, if they have two battle cards out, you can combo with Bujin, you put the other battle card to rest, now it's you can't do anything with it, right? So, it uh, feels really good. Just really saw a card for just one. Um, then there's Gokia, uh, which is a two drop you can get from uh, Bujin. Um, this card's kind of nifty. It's not super great. If you want to run two, do it. Uh, I think three's fine. Um, when you play this card, you choose one of your opponent's cards, battle cards in rest mode, and uh, they can't untap during your opponent's next turn. So it can be good for locking down some option cards um, that your opponent has. Um, doesn't get around barrier, of course, but can just be really good at uh, essentially blowing up another card for your opponent. You can play this card uh, if they have like three cards you want to get rid of, and uh, you can have this card, lock one of them, you can swing in one with leader, and then you combo with Gokia and Bujin or something and blow up the third card, right? So blowing up three cards essentially for two, great card economy and stuff like that. So it also has an active main for one. You're able to summon a Bojack Brigade with an energy cost of three from your hand. Um, by pitching this to the drop area. Uh, some also really quick thing to talk about. Um, since Boja or Bobbity has some uh, restrictions, uh, or not some, uh, some reductions with it, you're able to do some fancy things. So if you have Bobbity out and you play Bujin, this Agent Destruction Bojack will cost two in hand, so you can play this for free off Bujin, which feels really good to have a 20k, you know, barrier, um, being able to switch something into to rest mode with barrier on turn two like that. Feels really good, or also, uh, same kind of thing, Gokia, for one, can get out this Bojack, um, wh whatever, is it Personal Agent of Destruction? Resident Agent, <laughs> Resident Agent of Destruction out for one, which also feels good, just getting a blocker out that also is able to uh, put something in your opponents in rest mode and also drop a card from the top of their deck, how, what value, but uh, really good, uh, something to think about, you cannot get this three drop Bojack Agent of Destruction out if you have Bobbity and you're trying to use Gokia's effect because it costs two. Gokia says specifically it costs it needs to cost three. So just something to keep in mind, but um, some some cool things there. Uh, Zangia is but also Gokia. You can have as many of these out as you want. It doesn't have the restriction for whatever reason. Uh, and then there's Zangia. Zangia is also super duper good um, and uh, kind of the core of why this deck's great. Um, when you play her, um, it's 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 two cost, but when you play her, um, you're able to summon a Bojack Brigade from your deck that costs one. Um, so you can do some fancy things with these three of where you, you like turn when you play Bujin, Bujin finds Zangia, or Bujin plays Zangia from hand for free, and then Beedo, uh, you, you get use Zangia to get Beedo for free. So you get three cards, and then you also get to draw one for leader, and then also Beedo looks top five for another one. So really good, uh, just quick ways to gain advantage. You can also get Zangia out of Arrival of Space Pirates. Uh, Arrival of Space Pirates is pretty much uh, Freeze's call for Bojack Brigade. Uh, you find just a Bojack Brigade of cost two or less, and uh, you um, you play it in rest mode from your deck. So you can get Zangia, and then Zangia can get Bujin, and Bujin can get Beedo, because Bujin says two or less, so, and Bujin's one. Or you can even get Bujin to get Gokia, or something like that, right? Uh, just some combo plays with that. Uh, and then also, uh, active main, you can put this card from your uh, main, or you can put this card to your drop area, choose a Bojack battle card, and it gains crit. Uh, being able to dump itself into the uh, drop area is also really important. You can whiff with it, and then you can play another Zangia because of the restriction. So uh, it feels bad sometimes, but it's you sometimes just need to pop itself just so you can play another one. Also, I forgot to mention, Beto has one of these pop itself effects. Um, you can put it to the drop area, and then you get to look for five space pirates with cost of three or two or less, two or less. Put them into your deck and shuffle. He counts himself too, so if you have four targets, you can just put him in grave and or discard area, and uh, you can use him himself to shuffle back in. So really good, has some recursion and uh, just lets you 
have a better deck and you know cards to draw out of it especially since stuff summons from your deck you can get some more options there when if you're running out so that feels really good uh we'll go into the three drop bojack so we've got bojack agent of destruction we kind of talked about him when you play this you choose one of your opponent's bow cards ignoring barriers switch to rest mode which is great it's a big old 20k and also has active main for two if this card's in rest mode your opponent's leader card gets switched to rest mode and can't untap during your opponent's next turn that can be devastating against the right deck, uh, especially like like Broly. I can think of if Broly can't draw cards uh, or can't swing, you can't draw cards, right? It's just like it's done. It's a done deck. So that feels really good to play against and get this off. You have to be in rest mode, which can be dangerous at times. But other than that, I, I think it's it's a really good uh, good thing to do. So there's that, and then also we've got um, Bojack Pirate Pirates Pride. We already talked about him. Um, but he's also a three drop and that's important because we've got our eight drop Bojack, which is our win condition uh, If you don't know about this guy So you EX evolve on a three drop Bojack with three yellow energy and one colorless uh, When you play this card and you have five or more life uh, you switch all of your opponent's cards to rest mode Does not ignore barrier you have barrier it gets ignored uh, and then also um, when any of your opponent's cards get untapped you they have to warp one card from their hand and if multiple cards get untapped at the same time, they have to warp one for each card. So, like, at the beginning of their turn, if they're tapped out for, with four energy, just for t untapping their energy, which they have to do, they have to warp four. So, that's really great. The warping happens before they draw, so they're always going to have at least one card in hand, uh, which is, I guess, fair, right? But um, really powerful just being able to do that. Also, uh, I see I see some people just, like, are who are too who's just spend too much resources to trying to stay at five life for this ability to activate. If your opponent taps out every turn anyways, it doesn't really matter about the the five. Uh, the the warping effect is no matter what your life is at. So don't don't spend too much resources keeping yourself at five if it makes if you're still able to if they're gonna tap out doing it, right? If they're gonna tap you out or tap themselves out trying to get you to stay at five life, it, you are they already did your work for you. They used resources, they tapped out and you still get to play a Bojack, right? So that's that's the big thing to consider. Also, uh, it has another effect, because uh, all these cards have like three effects. But um, it's um, you're able to send one of your Bojack Brigades uh, from the battle to the drop, and it gets dual attack, which is great for closing out games. Uh, also, I forgot to say, yeah, okay, so especially paired with Zangia. So use Zangia's effect to pop herself to give Bojack crit, and then pop something else with Bojack to give itself dual attack, and now you've got 25k dual attack, 25k. I said 25k twice. I'm tired. Uh, so, and that's that's really good. And then, so it tells your opponents, okay, either they have to discard their cards, or or tap their energy, which means they'll have to discard cards to defend themselves. It just makes them run out of resources that much faster. So that's really the only win condition. It can be kind of slow to win it with this deck, but um, you can like win the game on turn four and then just like slowly whittle them away until like turn seven. So something to think about. Um, I think I've talked about all cards. Uh, Time Magic's good because it's a free negate, um, and that's it. We fill our drop area really fast. Merciless Strike Zangia is our super combo. It's a sparking five, and uh, it's a three cost, so you can't recycle with Beto. Otherwise, that would be too broken. But And then uh, Sensu Bean, because I, I already told you. Sensu Bean's great, and you're yellow, so you don't have to worry about Tien. So uh, that's going to be it for me. Hopefully the audio worked. If you, I mean, I guess if you're hearing this, it did, but... Um, yeah, this is this is deck I've been working out. I think it has a lot of potential, um, and I I feel pretty confident when I say that. Um, this this is going to be like a weird like before set seven meta uh, in May, so this is like a month and a half early even. But uh, I really I really think this has a lot of potential, and I'll probably be tweaking it around a bit. But I'd say like 40, 40 to forty five cards of, of these feel really solid in here. I'd say Jocko is probably questionable this four drop janimba is and so and maybe maybe like you need one less agent or something but i, I swear it feels good and I, I think it can do a lot of good so anyways thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you all next time